it transcends the realm of matter, it becomes transmaterial. Don't say you could not understand this, because there's nothing there to understand. This is just the way it is. These things are made from particles, but particles are not the solid, everlasting type of mass that Newton once thought. No, you leave a particle out of sight, it evolves as a wave. It is gone, the mass is gone. All right, we do not know why microphysical entities do this or how they do it. Science, by the way, never answers the question of why. It only describes how things happen. Evolving as waves is the normal state of business for particles. Next puzzle. When an electron is in its wave-like state, where is it? What is its position in space? The answer is this. The wave is extended in space. Therefore, the electron has no definite position. It is nowhere. It has a definite position, a defined position, only when it is a particle. In the wave, the space coordinates have no actual value, but many potential values. Here's a magical word. word. The wave-like state is a potentiality state. You interact with it, one of the potential positions comes out of it. That's the concept of potentiality. The wave-like states into which microphysical objects dissolve are not states of actuality but potentiality. In such a state, a physical property of a particle, such as the position in space, does not have an actual value, but a multiplicity of potential values. Without an actual place in space, the particle is not part of the actual world. When a particle like this enters the realm of potentiality, it leaves the empirical world. It is in a state that we cannot experience. It is trans-empirical. The actuality, the empirical particle, emerges out of the potentiality state when it interacts with objects in its environment. That rule applies to everything. The visible world is an actualization, an emanation, out of a domain of transmaterial and transempirical potentiality forms. There are indications that the potentiality waves at the basis of reality are contiguous, being connected like the water waves in an ocean. From this developed the view that the nature of physical reality is that of an indivisible wholeness, one, the one, in which everything is interconnected. Potentiality waves are everywhere. They are the foundation of reality. For example, electrons in atoms are standing waves. In our last lecture here, we talked about <coughs> these waves of atomic orbitals in atoms. So, here you have it. The basis of physical reality is transempirical. It is transmaterial. It's a wholeness. Reality appears to us in two domains. Actuality, the world of things. Potentiality, the world of forms. There is a non-empirical part. The empirical world is an emanation out of a realm of forms. When we interact with these forms, matter appears. 
physicists do not know how. That's it. It's easy. We have read do you agree? Do you agree? You better agree. <laughs> we have reached a point where you can understand that the philosophy of quantum theory can be presented as a manifestation of perennial philosophy. Philosophia perennis. The ancient Indian sages developed the concept of Sanatana Dharma which can be translated as perennial philosophy, all-pervading truth, or eternal path. In Europe, the concept appeared in the age of the Renaissance, has been pre at various times used in the most recent past by Aldous Huxley. We can define or describe this concept in the following way. When truth is absolute truth, it will show itself again and again with the same messages in different minds, in different ages, through thousands of years, in different cultures and continents. Applied to the quantum phenomena, the perennial aspect means <coughs> essential aspects of reality which now emerge in quantum science have been anticipated, postulated, known by ancient sages, often thousands of years before the scientific phenomena were observed. Quantum physics revives ancient metaphysical <coughs> and spiritual concepts. It brings physics into the context of metaphysics, ethics, psychology, anthropology, and so on. It reveals the unity of knowledge in the wholeness of reality. So this is the second part of my talk about. A simple example of the Elnir concept is the discovery that the basis of the material world is transmaterial. It is an old hat. Plato already taught, atoms are mathematical forms. Pythagoras, all things are numbers. Similarly, the concept of waves as cosmic principle of creation has been used widely in our history. We do not know the entities in the realm of potentiality. They are trans-empirical like Kant's noumena. Physics posits that there are waves, vibrations. In Kashmir Shaivism, a form of Hindu philosophy, Spanda is an important concept. Spanda is a Sanskrit term that denotes subtle vibrations, waves or throbs, meaning the vibrations of the universe as expressions of cosmic creativity, as the universe gives rise to the manifested world. The Himalayan sages thought that the manifested world derives from some primordial vibration, which they symbolized by a mantra, Um or Aum. Rhythmic movement in the form of a dance is important in Sufism the mystical tradition of Islam. The experiences of the union with the divine results in a rhythmic bodily movement, the Sufi dance or Sufi swirling. It sets a person into resonance with the rhythmic movements in the cosmos. According to the Kybalion, one of the principles on which the hermetic worldview is based is the property of vibration and rhythm. Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. Because of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, the atoms in material systems can never rest, must constantly oscillate or vibrate. We have seen how important the concept of potentiality is. It is another perennial concept. 
In the Vedantic texts of Indian philosophy, Brahman is the ultimate reality. It has the nature of intelligence and is the only cause of the universe. In this worldview, the material universe emanates out of Brahman, but the emanation is not creation because the universe is already hidden in Brahman before it emanates, like a tree in the seed. Before its manifestation, the universe exists in a state of potentiality. Potentiality waves are thought-like. Thoughts have inherent aspects of potentiality. An unexpressed thought is non-empirical, but it can become empirical by being expressed in words. Saint Augustine already had such views. He wrote in one of his sermons, Look, I, who is talking to you, thought before I came to you what I would tell you. When I was thinking what to say, the word was already in my heart. I found you as a Roman, so in Latin the word has to be presented to you. If you were a Greek, the word would have to be put before you in Greek. But that word is neither in Latin in me, nor in Greek. It is entirely beyond any language, what is in my heart. And then of course he would not be a saint if he wouldn't conclude. Like my word assumed a language by which it was heard, so the word of God assumed flesh by which it was seen. Here it begins to become apparent that physics is connected with other disciplines of human endeavor, like metaphysics, ethics, psychology, and so on. We live in this physical reality and are part of it. Its nature is our nature. So, if reality is structured in potentiality and actuality, then the same structure applies to us. In fact, it is the distinct, distinctive character of human beings that we are able to act not only in the empirical world, but also in the realm of potentiality. With our mind, we can reach into the realm of forms and act as personal centers of potentiality. This is precisely the essence of Abraham Maslow's humanistic psychology. Maslow taught that human beings live with a structure of complex needs which form a hierarchical order, like the steps of a pyramid. At the highest level, we find the need of self-actualization. The need of self-actualization is the need to become actualized in what a person is potentially, he wrote. A musician must make music. An artist must paint. A poet must write, if he is to be ultimately happy. What a man can be, he must be. Since reality is wholeness, the potentiality inside us is the cosmic potentiality. Thus, actualizing one's personal potential is one of the most important tasks in everybody's life because it is a cosmic need and an inalienable human right. Interactions with the forms in the realm of potentiality are possible only if the brain has evolved a structure, a structural geometry that makes it sensitive to the potentiality waves in the cosmic field. <coughs> 